about ready? We're ready. Okay. <laughs> that music completely inspired me. Oh, yes. The <laughs> elevator music. Feels like we're going up, we're going down. Who even knows? Well, good morning. Uh, my name is David Tan. I'm a member of the VTC committee um, and a co-host of this workshop. Saigon South International School is honored to be hosting the ninth annual Vietnam Tech Conference in collaboration with Eunice in Hanoi. It's my honor and on behalf of the VTC committee to introduce you to Donna Sinclair and um, as well as Florence who will be um, supporting her in this, uh, who will talk to us about project-based learning at your fingertips in the upcoming workshop. Donna is the CEO and co-founder of Crispy Classroom and EVA, an online collaborating marketing system. Uh, her background includes 17 years in the classroom, followed by 10 years in the Quebec Ministry of Education as project manager for project-based assessment models, and later as the provincial coordinator for assessment in English. She has also developed an extensive curriculum resource uh, materials that place an emphasis on cross-curricular learning. Donna has co-founded Crispy as an online learning space that would provide an opportunity for teachers to facilitate project-based learning within a digital reality. Recently, she's uh, led the development of a new tool set named Eva. Eva focuses on collaborative assessment and discussion in both small and large groups. Welcome, Donna Sinclair, and I will hand it off to you, Donna. Hi there. Thank you so much. Um, wow, that sounds like a lot of years, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be here. And uh, if at any point, uh, I know we only have 30 minutes, so I want to make sure we get everything in, but I also want to make sure you have a chance to be part of a discussion. And so I'll make sure to leave some time at the end so we can have any kind of a, a discussion around some of the things we talk about in this session. Um, as mentioned, uh, Crispy uh, is a it's an online learning platform, but part of what we, uh, how we came about or came to being was based on the idea that we were very involved in uh, project-based uh, learning uh, for our provincial government and for helping teachers go into what we actually call in Canada, uh, learning situations. And uh, the idea is really that students need to be placed into real live uh, authentic learning situations in order for them to learn and to use information that's been sort of given to them around them and apply it. So it's really about critical thinking and about opportunities to create learning stories. So I'm going to dive in and, and use our actual platform to share with you a little bit more about this. And please, Florence will watch for anybody that has a question. You know, if you uh, raise a question in chat, she can stop me. Don't worry, I'm used to... Uh, that happening. So uh, we'll dive in. I'm going to share my screen with you and make sure you can all see it. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to go up and start at the top here. So right now I want to um, just look at it. Uh, let me just go back here. One thing uh, I, I want to think about it from a very, uh, the pitch, what I call the pitch, you know, and I think most of you probably know a bit about project based learning uh, and what it's all about. But I just want to make sure for any of you that don't that we really start at the beginning. So when we look at project based learning, uh, and this is the short version of it, what it is, we're really looking at giving students opportunity to learn through real world situations. So the other big part of it is you'll often hear people refer to it as being authentic. Um, and the other part of it is that it's all about students showing how they're learning. Uh, it's not just about the end goal. It's really about the process. So it's really about giving an opportunity to show how they're going to learn. The longer version uh, which isn't really that long. I could get a lot longer than this, but the longer version is really that it provides them with the opportunity to learn through real world situations. So it's, it's authentic. Um, and at the end of the day, it's not about just about the end, it's about the process that they're going through as they learn, okay? The guts of project-based learning really is where it gets fun and interesting for teachers. In a traditional classroom, we often uh, think about teaching students knowledge and facts, and it's often done through lessons, a series of lessons that are somewhat disconnected. And that's where we uh, find it often falls short for students as far as what they actually retain or how much critical thinking is involved. Uh, when we talk about a project-based learning classroom, the teacher now all of a sudden becomes the facilitator. 
And the facilitator is there to set up a foundation for learning and for guiding students through the story. This is what sometimes becomes tricky for a teachers is because we're inherently used to being in charge and being in control and being the ones that make the decisions or have the knowledge. And in a project-based learning situation, you have to be willing to give up a little bit of the control, the reins, and let students get involved. So ultimately it's about guiding them through a story, a learning story. And at the end of that story, students will either have certain learning uh, that they've accomplished based on what they brought to it or what they learned along the way. And I'm, I'm gonna get to some real good examples of it as soon as we can. One thing about project-based learning is that my background, I was a, a teacher who taught, uh, I worked in art. I, I had music, I was involved in theater and drama and all of these touched on project-based learning. So the idea about project-based learning is that you're giving students different modes of how they can show or demonstrate their understanding. It's not always about an end of the uh, year quiz or an end of the session quiz or multiple choice or anything. It can also be done, assess the students through them demonstrating and them choosing how they're going to demonstrate. So we're looking at multiple skill sets uh, that students can use to show their, demonstrate their understanding. People that are involved in theater arts, and I noticed a lot of you have uh, backgrounds in the arts. This is a great opportunity to incorporate uh, theater and incorporate um, even uh, the plastic arts into project based. It's also really big in cross curricular. One of the things that we have seen in the work that we were doing and, and with Crispy is, uh, you know, in a lot of the Scandinavian countries, they fall into the project based learning realm because of all of the opportunities it provides to mix the curriculum. So actually drop the walls between subject areas and let those subjects cross into one another and make actually the experience for the teacher as a facility and the student so much more valuable. So how do we do it? So I really wanna be able to give you an example of what um, project-based look learning looks like. And right now we're in the crispy classroom and uh, I'm in the theater mode. This is what we use when we're talking about uh, teaching in a synchronous uh, style with our students. So you're on the screen with me and I would be walking through a project and I would be having my students go through the discussion of, of that project in the early stages with me through theater mode. But let me leave this for a minute. I'm just gonna admit someone there. We leave theater mode for a moment and I'm gonna go into the classroom. So right now I'm in our classroom and I am in uh, the project that we're working on right now, but let me go over to one where I'm gonna show you um, actually some projects uh, that I have set up for you, one sec. And it's called the Silver Creek Wetland. So the Silver Creek Wetland is a good example of a project that is based on project-based learning. And it's going to take students to, into a situation that's a real life situation. And what you can see here is I have this project ready to go that I'm gonna use with my whole class. I also have my class divided up into teams because a big part of project-based learning is the idea that students can be working in teams, on different projects, uh, it, they can also work individually, but a lot of times uh, some of these projects require at least part of it to be done in a team. So let me show you what this project looks like. So in this project, we've given the students a real life situation, which is based on a small community in, uh, in this case in Canada, but this could be anywhere, uh, where they are struggling with a situation that the uh, town has a, uh, a wetland that the organize the um, local uh, environmentalists want to save and the developers want to develop. They want to build more buildings and build condos and make it into a big uh, uh, profitable um, economic uh, development for them. So now the students working with me are going to be going through and looking at the idea that as a group, we'll watch the video that we have up here, which is gonna tell the story of the Silver Creek wetland. So if I was working with my students, I would be playing this video to them and having them understand the premise or the basis for what we're gonna be working on. 
So this whole project is going to be covering science because we're looking at wetlands. Uh, we're going to be looking at them determining how they're going to demonstrate their understanding in this activity that they'll be working on. And I won't show you the video because we don't have time, but I'll be putting them through some different exercises like a think pair share. First of all, the reason I'm doing that is I want to understand their prior knowledge. What do my students already know? Often in many different teaching uh, classrooms where I was talking about disconnected lessons, we're sometimes teaching um, material or uh, information that students already know. Uh, or we actually don't even recognize that we have very many different levels of learning in the classroom, students that are much farther ahead in what they already understand, some students who are gonna need a lot more support. A big thing about project-based learning is that we're not looking at getting to a test at the end. So there is a need for us to assess as we go along. So in this case, I'm gonna do a first assessment by determining what my students know, and that's through a think pair share. So I'm gonna be asking them this question. They have this on their side, by the way. I can go out to theater mode and actually just do this as a whole group and start with them, with them as a whole group and go through the activity and say to them, what do you want to, what do you know about wetlands? Be ready to share with the whole class. And now at this point, I could turn to all of you and, uh, and we can go through a conversation on wetlands. Right away, we start with me generally getting an idea of their basic uh, prior knowledge. Again, now I'm gonna ask them before they get to the video to think of some things that they want to know about the Silver Creek wetland as we're talking about. So we're gonna do a quick share there too. This is all the idea of setting your students up and getting them ready for what eventually is going to be take, thrown over to them and they're gonna take control of. But as a teacher, as a facilitator, you still need to establish the stage and get them ready for what will ultimately be, in this case, a guiding question. So in the next part also, when we watch the video, we can watch the video together, but I want them to be thinking about what it is that the video is telling us about this particular issue. Now, remember, this is a real life issue. This Silver Creek wetland actually is happening today in this community in, in, in Canada, where there's a, a big, uh, um, dispute between the economic side and between the organizers of the uh, climate uh, awareness group. So these two groups right now are bidding for people to either join their sides in their cause. So it's a great opportunity for students to find information in newspapers and online and through uh, video uh, blogs, whatever, to get to the answer that they're going to ultimately have to come to. So as we go through this uh, project and the students actually have a, a video that they'd be watching in here, I'm going to have them go off and on their own, they're going to go back to this section here and you can see I have students that are in there in that uh, project already. And this project, I've divided the project up so it has these different parts. Now another thing to remember in project-based learning is that you are organizing the story. So part of this work that we're doing with this, these students in this particular project is to have them, as they go through, start to get into teams. They're going to possibly need me to come in and add in something in here. And the one thing about the way we've designed this, and this is why we set up Crispy, is I can go into the project builder over here, and uh, I won't take a lot of time with that, but I can go in and I can change that. I can add in parts, I can add in pieces that I think my students need. I can go in and determine that, you know what? We got a little bit of a dip in learning here. I need to go back in and add something to support them to bring everybody up to the right place. So that's all about the way this is organized. I can change the language, but all of these projects are fully accessible and I can go in and, and change them as a teacher and make them work for my student. But if I go back out to that particular project, and again, we see we've got the first part of it. I can also control how I want my students so that they don't move. And that's another thing about managing the flow of the story or managing the flow of the project. On the student side, which looks very similar to this, every time I disable a section, I'm also disabling the media up here. 
So that means that my students are going to be focused where I want them to focus. Because there are certain points in, the, in this whole process, I wanna make sure that there's certain learning goals that I have in place for them around the Silver Creek wetland. I wanna make sure everyone understands what a wetland is. I want to make sure everyone has some background knowledge on why those wetlands are important, what type of life would be in that wetland. I also want them then to start to either become a bit committed to either the uh, environmental side or the economic development side. So what I did with this project is that I took the project, it has economic development and here as a group we can see that there's a team that would be set up for economic development. Uh, there's another team that would be set up uh, for environmental protection. Uh, and then as the students start to work through the tasks that they will have to be developing with uh, throughout this project, they're going to eventually be presenting their actual uh, presentation. And it's going to be based on this question. Often in project-based learning, we set students up with an essential question or a series of guiding questions. In this case, it's how do we best move forward to grow as a community while recognizing the environmental concerns associated with the Silver Creek wetland. As they get into their teams, they realize that each of their team needs to understand how they can best respond to that question that's being asked by, the gen by this general population. So right away, these students are problem solving. What I did was I created that project, okay, over here, and I copied the project. So I click copy. And when I copied it, and I'll just do it to show you what happens. When I copied it, I copy it into one of the teams here. I'll copy it into team three just because they have nothing. But team one right now in my classroom are going to be working as the environmental protection organization. So when they arrive in my classroom, they're gonna see that that's where they're at. And they've been given a specific task as that group. Team two will actually be dropped in to a project, which means that they are looking at uh, the, uh, another. So you've got both sides of the coin there for what students are gonna be working on. As they go through, they're gonna be doing check-ins with me. And the important thing about checking in with students in project-based learning, is that we're always looking at where they're at and what extra support they need. So the idea that project-based learning leaves students really on their own um, is, is, not, is not so if you're making sure that you're checking back in. And it's one thing, and, and those of you that may know of uh, Ann Davies, she's a really interesting uh, assessment expert. She talks a lot about the idea that as we're going along and working with students, we see them learning, learning, and things are going well. And then we get to a point we have to stop and make sure we've come in and done some assessment. And that's that assessment for learning, for us to understand where our students are at. Then in the assessment for learning, we may find that we have to dip down and we feel like we're on a little bit of a pause because we have to add in something else to help students move on to the next phase. So there's a balance in the project-based learning where we're looking at students going through that story on that path and us as facilitators coming in and stopping and saying, okay, let's just do a quick check. Where are we at in the learning process? And that means that I may need to do some type of an assessment. Now, an assessment can be a think pair share. An assessment can be a whole group discussion. An assessment could be a mini kind of question that you pose to the students and have them in groups discuss and come back to uh, around. It can be many different forms. It could also be a, a small survey. It could be anything, even an audio, which you ask the students to, to do a quick one minute audio on some question that you pose to them. Many different ways of checking in to see where your students are. At the end of this particular project, we're looking at students basically coming forward with a share. Now, their share that they've decided, you know, they're going to be determining what that share will look like is something, when I go back to my main project uh, and look at what I had, I'm going to go back into the main project and I would be then saying in this project, I would actually upload all of those projects into here so that I can have now a completed project-based story. So everything that's in here is what we were looking at, plus all of the work of all of my students. 
I can drop in to forget, don't forget, you need to always be checking in with students. So I can drop in and see here what Jennifer has done so far um, and what she's been working on, what's it looked like, the work that she's been putting in. Here she's only, she's done a text. She might have uploaded an audio file for me to share with me some of her learning. She might have update, uploaded um, a video or whatever. I can also now do some feedback with her about where she's at. And this becomes one-to-one. -one. The other big thing about project-based learning is we have to remember to check in with individual learners and see where they may need more support. Any questions so far? I feel like I'm speeding through with a 30 minute uh, uh, limit, limit. Okay, so if we're looking at um, this particular student and me giving feedback to them, this is something where I can decide that for Jennifer, if I need to, I may need to give Jennifer something that's really going to fit or meet her needs. So this is one example that I've given you of uh, project-based learning, but there's many other ideas. Now I've shown you a lot of science so far. Uh, there's not just science, you know, we can look at project-based learning in other subject areas, um, in uh, music, for instance. Uh, we have a, a group that we work with where their students are, this is for younger students, and they're working a lot, uh, and I, I apologize that this is in French, um, but we, um, obviously in Canada, we work in uh, both uh, French and English. But uh, this, in this one, it's really getting students to listen to and, and discover a lot about um, classical music um, and, uh, and, and understanding uh, major, minor, some of the basic aspects of it. But as you can see, it's all broken into parts down here and all the media associated. So a really big thing about project-based learning is being able to manage the progress or manage how students flow through the piece. And if some students are going to move quicker and you know that, then I organize them in teams so that I give those teams greater access than other teams. And I can help them sort of manage the way they're gonna go through and flow in a project. Uh, the other thing is that what we often do is that we really make sure, in this case, uh, I've got down in my science room, I have a lot of projects that are building towards some culmination. So in the idea of students understanding what a fjord is, understanding estuary basics, and then at the end, the big one for me is the environmental ethics. And now this puts them into a situation where they have to actually do their research and understanding what is the relationship between people and estuaries? And they choose an estuary somewhere in the world to study. Now I'm actually, in this case of project-based learning, I'm directing where they're going because I want them to look at estuaries. Project-based learning can also be a lot much more open than that where you're actually having students focus on a much larger topic and then letting them determine what it is they're going to want to study and research within that topic. It's the idea that you're not really having uh, students um, learn something in order for you to test them at the end of it. You're having them learn something so they can demonstrate that learning in another form or another shape uh, or change the way it, it, it's going to appear in the work that they do. Uh, it's really about applying and being able to apply the learning that they have in other contexts. Uh, we've often said in, uh, within a, a Canadian context that the idea that students that learn should be able to take that learning and use it somewhere else in order for us to really say it has been learned. So it's about practicing those higher level skill, uh, skills and level of thinking with critical thinking, et cetera. And the idea of exploring and the idea of, uh, of creating, which we also know is a higher level skill um, and allow them to take that and do something with it, which is, is uh, something that doesn't happen always in the classroom. Are there any questions at all? Cause I'm, I know we're getting down to um, only a couple of minutes are left. Um, I just want to show you too that, you know, there's so many different ways of going through and being able to, um, I organize myself so that I can share a lot of projects with different people and build projects. But if I'm also looking at adding in projects, 
um, we go in and we look at the fact that we have a lot of um, projects in, you know, in social studies, histories, uh, different topics that often uh, will cover um, different areas that are cross-curricular again. So even though this one is a um, act like a historian, um, or if I was to look at um, some type of history from, uh, uh, in this case, this is Canadian history, but it's looking at perspectives in history. If I add that in for my students to have access to, this is a really big project where they're looking at the idea that history is told through many different lenses. And so as students, I'm going to ask them to sort of take that, this particular project and apply this in a different time or a different context. This one deals back in, in the early 1500s. So, and it's looking at how perspective, how something told from one perspective can really change what we understand or learn about that. So my students are then going to go and off and look at choosing their own point in history and something that they are interested in and look at how different in, uh, perspectives influence our understanding of a period of time or uh, certain actions or events that took place in time. Uh, again, and this one helps these students. This is very, uh, has everything uh, organized. Again, I can change it around. I can move these around. I can, I can uh, um, close it up so students don't have access but it's all about that whole story. And I think the key points that I hope people take away from project-based learning is the idea that we're looking at having uh, students that are going to be expressing their own understanding and showing how they're learning throughout. They're also going to have a facilitator or teacher who is uh, stopping in to do assessment for learning to understand how they're learning and where they're at and also to give them an opportunity to do peer assessment and share uh, their own self-assessment about how they're learning and what it is that they need support with. That is what, when students are able to be uh, experiencing that, that is what enables them to become a, uh, a learner in, in the real world. So it's really about authenticity and it's, uh, it's also about providing them with authentic um, audiences and also about providing them with authentic uh, learning experiences by inviting people into the classroom or into their, into their realm that can share some real stories with them uh, and give them the opportunity to practice their critical thinking skills. Does anyone um, have any, uh, any comments or are there people using project-based learning in their classrooms? Oh, so I see some people use I it think, first. I, Donna, Donna, I think what is happening is that, is that we are posting our questions in, in the platform of Woba. So you, you are not seeing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just seeing that now, yes. So I think that uh, people are saying they use it for Spanish classes. We use it a lot for language learning. So we have a lot of opportunities for t as students that are working in uh, their second language. Uh, and a lot of the projects that we build for the Crispy Classroom are based on the idea of using language in a different context. So not using language just to learn the spelling, the grammar, the, uh, you know, all of the right rules of the language, but actually starting to hear it, to have opportunities to, um, to, uh, to, to practice it in different contexts. Uh, it's really about giving them that cross-curricular opportunity because that's when really students carry that language within a subject that might be really interesting. We love it when we see kids learning uh, French uh, that are in English speaking parts of Canada um, and they're learning French through, uh, through science, through music, uh, whatever. Uh, and it really gives them an opportunity to, to practice it and um, not feel so threatened by uh, language learning. Um, so what age learners can best use this? Uh, so we use it with, um, 
we actually have a lot of uh, elementary uh, classrooms using Crispy. It's uh, a tool that's very easy to use because you determine how much of it you put in. Secondary uh, teachers, we have um, secondary teachers who put a lot in and, and load it up, uh, but that's not necessary. For younger students, you control what they see and you control how they move through it. And that's a big part of the Crispy Classroom is managing. You know, online teaching and a critical piece of it is that we need to be chunking more. When we're in a classroom, we don't show students everything they're going to know or, or learn. Um, the thing is that with this chunking uh, capability, you're really able to sort of give students little bits at a time or to put them into teams. And we also use uh, our theater mode as a way that if you're working in a classroom with students in class and you've got it on the, um, on the smart board or on whatever you're interactive, maybe you're using a screen and a projector, um, you could be using the, the Crispy Classroom theater mode as a way of guiding through some of those discussions that you wanna have with students. The music uh, project that I showed you is used by teachers that way. So they put that up there, the audio goes on, and then the kids are listening to this classical music to determine what it is that the uh, the music the musician is actually uh, trying to portray, whether the major, the minor, etc. Um, we can find some of them. Um, so I uh, so I'm not I'm looking. There's so many questions. Um, what did we practice expert group research that uh, inquiry based uh, research is something we've worked a lot with teachers on. Um, and I think that's probably the same thing expert group research uh, inquiry based uh, cooperative learning and a lot to do with the constructivist method. So the idea of constructivist uh, learning where students are building their learning and that that building um, is something that's considered uh, a way of students acquiring more knowledge as they get ready towards some of the critical thinking uh, activities that might be uh, being presented to them. Um, yes, so we don't, the projects that go there, you can upload your project. And I feel like if I can go back in, I can show you that really quickly. Um, because in this here, I have my, uh, the project builder here, I can create my own project here. And I'll just call it ABC just because that's easy. <laughs> and I just do the exact same thing. I'm creating the exact same what we had. You're creating as many parts. And of course, these parts can all be moved around later. So when you're designing it, I usually think about in project based learning, it's what is it I want them to learn. So I'm thinking about my outcome being here. And then I'm going to add in the type of tasks that I want. And I can add in either a media upload task where they can upload audio files, video files, image files, you name it. Um, or I'm just gonna add in a writing task because I want them to do some writing. So I'm going to add in the writing here and uh, then it's gonna show up on my side. I'm going to add in any files that I wanna drop in. I can put in Vimeo, YouTube, any kind of links. I can go into my Google Drive, my OneDrive, and bring things in from there if I want to. Uh, it's very easy to make the project. And to remember, the material that's in there is your material. It's from your um, uh, computer, so it's not accessible by anybody else other than you. And uh, at the end of the day, it's still all yours in your computer. And the interesting thing is too, that if you're working with a team, I could go over and share that project I did with somebody else on my team and let them have access to it. And then we can start to do some sharing. And that's why when I have incoming resources here, when people share the project, someone shared this project with me, I automatically drop it in here and I've got access, but I can change it. If I don't like the way it's done, I can go in and change it and make it my own. So everything is really easy to uh, either create on your own or access or change. Um, okay, so I think we're at a time. Are we, Proctor? Um, yes. Uh, well, thank you, Donna, for your presentation and providing excellent insights for project-based learning and management. Um, if any of the, um, the the participants would like to continue the dialogue or to contact uh, Donna directly, both of these things are fully accessible through the, the Whova app. 
And so we would just like to, um, everyone would like to give a round of applause for Dana and um, just uh, <laughs> thank her for sharing her insights. And uh, yeah, feel free to use the question and answer um, portal on in, in, in the Whova app and uh, continue the conversation on the end. Yeah, and you know, we're really excited about project-based learning. So if anybody wants to uh, meet with us at all, just uh, send me an email. You can send it to Donna at crispy.com. And even if you don't spell my name right, it ends up being anything. It can be, it can be cat, elephant, rat, you name it, monkey. It's just as long as you get at crispy and there's two eyes, dot com, it'll arrive to us. Okay, we, we it gets there. So um We'd love to talk with you more. So just let us know and uh, we'll set up a Zoom uh, session with you. All right. Have a good uh, rest of the conference, everyone. Yes, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.